What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 56 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, I am going to be talking about deleting Pokemon. This should be a pretty short video, but we're going to just be looking at different ways that we can remove Pokemon from our team. With that said, let's get into it. So, right here, what I've got is actually a couple of little test events here made in my house. And these handle the deletion of Pokemon in multiple ways. There are multiple ways that I would like to be able to delete Pokemon in my game. And the first way is by species. So what I've got here is an event that goes through every Pokemon in our team, and if they are a Gyarados, they remove them from our team. This is something that you could use for your game. If you want to, like, I don't know why, but for some example, if you had, if you knew your Pokemon had a, like you started with a specific Pokemon, or let's say there was an event where all of a certain Pokemon were just like wiped from the existence, you could do that. So. Like, let's say all the Pikachus in the world get deleted. Let's break down how this event works also while we're here. So, it's very sad, but we now are living in a timeline where every Pikachu has been deleted. What this does is it sets a variable i to zero. The reason we set this at the very start is because we're going to be iterating and incrementing this variable, and depending on whether our search is true or false, we will then delete the Pokemon at that index from our team. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and it doesn't sound like jargon. I'm still going to break it down for you, so let's look into it a little bit further. So, the way that this loop works is for Pokemon in Trainer Pokemon Party. So, for every Pokemon in your party, if is const Pokemon species is equal to PB species Pikachu. So essentially, for every Pokemon in your party, if the Pokemon's species is equal to Pikachu, remove PB remove Pokemon at I. PB remove Pokemon at is a function that removes a Pokemon from your party at the index provided. So, for example, if we call PB remove Pokemon at zero, that will remove the Pokemon at the front of your party. If we call five, that'll rem remove the Pokemon at the end of the party. The reason for this, or not, exa not exactly the Pokemon at the end of the party, but the Pokemon in the sixth slot. It's possible that you only have four Pokemon in your party. If you only have four Pokemon in your party, then calling PB remove Pokemon at five won't do anything. We're, I have a way that we can solve this problem, and I'll show you that in a little bit, but first I wanna break into this function a little bit more. So i is equal to zero. For every Pokemon in your party, if they're equal to Pikachu, remove them at i. So the way this works is it starts at zero. So for the first Pokemon in your party, i is zero. So if they're equal to zero, or rather if Pokemon in slot zero is equal to Pikachu, and then we remove it. Otherwise, we move on to the next Pokemon. The way that we do that is for, uh, basically, we increment this variable down here. So, on the second loop of this four, it's checking our second Pokemon in our party, and i is now equal to one. That corresponds, because zero is the first Pokemon, one is the second Pokemon, two is the third Pokemon. So, for our second loop, if our second Pokemon in our party is equal to Pikachu, then we, remove, we call PB remove Pokemon at one, which is the second slot in our party. So, I'm actually going to edit this event, and we're going to run it. We're going to see it in action. So, save it. Now, let's run our game. And fortunately, we actually already have a Pikachu on our team. Check this out. I'm going to show our Pokemon real quick. So, Gyarados right here up in the top left is 0. Kadabra is 1. Pidgeotto is 2. Pikachu is 3. Diglett is 4. Chansey is 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That are, those are all of the indexes of our Pokemon party. So, theoretically, if we interact with this top tree here, it should delete our Pikachu, which is currently in index 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Pikachu is in index 3. So, let's interact with it. Deleting all Gyarados... Okay, I still had to modify the text of this event, but it's deleting all Pikachus right now. Trust me. Deleted. Now, let's go look at our party. Whoa, Pikachu's gone. That's crazy. Let's do this now. Let's do something a little crazy. Let's set this species 
of Diglett to also be Pikachu. Pikachu is species 25. Oh wait, that's not the wrong, that's not the right species. That's the right piece species. There we go, we've got our another Pikachu in our party. What does the tree have to say about that? Oh my gosh, he was deleted as well. Rest in peace. That poor soul. So, that is how you can delete all Pokemon from your party of a specific species. Now, let's say we want to make something a little bit simpler. Let's make it so there's an event where somebody walks up to you and says, Hey, in order to pass this door, you must sacrifice a Pokemon. Choose a Pokemon to sacrifice. Well, what we would do is what we have done in this tree. So, this PB Choose Pokemon is a function that pulls up your menu screen for your Pokemon and prompts you to choose a Pokemon. And then it does two things. It sets the index of that Pokemon in variable one, and then it sets the name of that Pokemon in variable three. If we wanted to, we could change these numbers so that way instead of setting the index in variable one, we could set this into, in, into variable 20. We could change this number to be whatever we want. However, traditionally, it is recommended that you use one and three for these values. So, the index of our Pokemon is stored in variable one after we choose them, which means we can call pbget. pbget takes the value of variable one. So, since after we choose it, it our Pokemon's index is stored in variable one, we can then call pbRemovePokemonAt, which takes an index. So, pbget1 takes the variable stored in one, or the value of the variable stored in variable one, which happens to be our Pokemon's index. So, that will delete the Pokemon that we've chosen. So, what we can do is actually be a little tricky here. I believe it would be slash v3 has been deleted. So, the name of our Pokemon was stored in variable three, and calling slash v3 gets its name. So, we choose our Pokemon, and then we delete them. Let's run it. So that would be a very sick and messed up event for you to put in your own game, but if we could make it so that way a man walks up to you and says, in order to progress, you must sacrifice a Pokemon right here and now. Choose one to sacrifice. All right, choose a Pokemon to delete. Okay, I choose Kadabra. Goodbye, Kadabra. Kadabra has been deleted. <gasps> it called his name and everything. And now he's been removed from our party because we passed the index into our remove function. Whoa, let's choose another Pokemon to delete. I choose Chansey, get the heck out of here, Chansey. Oh my gosh, our whole team is just dying. Uh, choose a Pokemon to delete. I choose Gyarados. Gyarados has been deleted. No, oh no, our whole team is getting destroyed. Okay, now let's say we wanted to delete the last Pokemon in our party. This one is actually not too hard either. What we would do is call PB remove at and then dollar sign trainer dot Pokemon count minus one. What this function does, this dollar sign trainer dot Pokemon count, is it returns the number of Pokemon currently in your party. This counts eggs and fainted Pokemon, I believe. So all it does is if you have a full team of Pokemon, it returns the number six. If you have only one Pokemon, it returns the value one. And since our indexes are funky, we subtract one from that value. So if we only have one Pokemon in our party, $trainer.PokemonCount will return one. However, if we only have one Pokemon in our party, that's at index zero. So then we subtract one. So index zero will then be deleted if we only have one Pokemon. If we have a full team of six, then what this will do is delete the Pokemon at index five. So that's perfect. If you only wanted to delete the first Pokemon in your party, then just set this to zero. It's even simpler. If you only want to delete the first Pokemon in your party, set that to zero. Although, I mean, that's kind of dumb, but you know, it'll work. Let's run this event now and see how it works. It's pretty easy. It's pretty quick. All right. so. This will now delete the last Pokemon in our party. Chansey, you poor soul. Rest in peace, Chansey. They've been deleted. Oh no. Next on the chopping block is Diglett. Rest in peace, Diglett. Delete the last Pokemon from your team. Deleted. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna switch them around now. So now Pikachu. So 
Index 0 is Gyarados, Index 1 is Kadabra, Index 2 is Pikachu, and Index 3 is Pidgeotto. So now if we interact with this, Pidgeotto will now be deleted. Oh gosh. Now if we interact with this, Pikachu will be deleted. Oh gosh, we're running out of Pokemon. I believe when you run out of po I don't know if you're allowed to run out of Pokemon. I think calling PB remove at doesn't work if you only have one Pokemon. So we only have one Gyarados. Gyarados has been deleted. Oh, I guess it does allow you to delete all your Pokemon. Oh, never mind. It doesn't it doesn't actually work. If you only have one Pokemon, then calling this function doesn't actually go through. For safe keeping for safety reasons, essentially. You could cause some really messed up stuff if you went from having zero po like one Pokemon to zero Pokemon. I believe if you do want to delete all of the Pokemon in your party, there is a different function that you can call. You would instead call this function, which is trainer.party.delete at and then the index so what this does is it deletes the last pokemon in your team and it doesn't care if you are out of pokemon so let's run this now let's go and delete all the pokemon in our team and go back down to zero pokemon it's going to be kind of crazy but we've got a full team of six here let's interact with it delete them delete delete them delete delete them delete the Expecto Patronum, the Wingardium Leviosa, Wing, uh, Avada Kedavra. So now all that's left is Gyarados. This will delete the last Pokemon from our team. He has been deleted. Now we are all out of Pokemon and we can no longer access the Pokemon menu. This one's a little bit riskier. It can lead into some really shitty situations if you make it so that way your trainer has no Pokemon. It's highly recommended that you don't go crazy on this because it's possible to make some really messed up scenarios for your player. If they are on a route and then all their like they lose all their Pokemon, trainer battles won't work properly because they'll like look at them, but then the battle won't be able to start because you don't have any Pokemon. Wild Pokemon won't appear in the grass. You can really, really, really lead into some messed up situations. So, if you want to delete the last Pokemon without worrying that um, you have wiped their entire team, call dollar sign trainer dot party dot delete at. However. The safer option is PB remove Pokemon at, and then the index. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully this helps you like think about some really messed up situations that you wanted to make. Um, what actually triggered me to think about making this episode is somebody commented asking about how they could implement some sort of chapter based system where in chapter one, it's like a prologue where you have one Pokemon, but then in chapter two, that Pokemon is removed and instead you're given another Pokemon. So. This, this is what you would want to call if you just want to get rid of Pokemon in your team. So what you could do is even make it so that way for Pokemon in your team, just remove them all. So like, let's say instead, um, instead of checking their, checking their species, you could just remove them and we could get rid of this break here also. So I think what this would do is for every Pokemon in your party, delete them except the last Pokemon should survive now. So let's just run this really quickly. This shouldn't call any errors, but if it does, it'll just be because I was doing stupid syntax stuff. Yeah, it was me just being a dumb bum. I'm gonna figure this out real quick and get right back to you. Here we go. Now I've gotten in a format that should work a little bit better. Essentially what this is gonna do is set that I equal to zero and then for every Pokemon in your party, remove them at index. So let's go and run this again. And then it'll also increment that index. Let's run this for loop and delete all of the Pokemon in our party. Because, gosh dang, deleting all the Pikachu in the party, deleted. So what this will do is remove every Pokemon in our party except for the last one. Interesting, it didn't delete all of them? Did I call something weird here? This should have deleted all the Pokemon in my party. Now it's Pikachu only? Interesting. So, as you can see, there are some weird things that happen when trying to iterate through everything here in your party. Um, I should have removed all the Pokemon at all the index, but essentially that just works too. Also, what you could do if you wanted to just like really hard code it, this isn't perfect either, but what you could do is just call this zero. Oh, that made a weird sound. Uh, paste, 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 paste. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then instead actually, what we could do is call this other command. And then again, this is only if you want to delete every Pokemon in your party and just like completely wipe. 
Like, this is really messed up of you to do this, but if you really wanted to make somebody stop playing your game and crush their hopes and dreams, this is what you could do. You could make some sort of event that just removes 100% of the Pokemon from their party in this manner. This is very terrible, and I, I, highly, I don't recommend you put this in any Pokemon game you make. Unless you put it in in like a clever way, but this just seems really mean if you put this in your game. So what this will do is it'll remove the Pokemon in index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and it does not care if that's the last Pokemon in your party. So now let's run this. Like I said before, this one is very mean, but this will just remove everything from your team. So what we've got here is a full team. They're all healthy, they're having a good a good life, they're living their best life, but we're gonna end that life right now. Deleted. Now, interesting, that didn't, once again, that kind of didn't go through everything. For some reason, is it because it hasn't like recompiled all the stuff? I mean, all of my Pokemon are now defeated. I wonder why it's not like deleting everything perfectly. Oh well, it's deleted all the Pokemon in our team. For some reason, maybe it's just trying to call them all at the same time and that's not, like, jiving properly. So, as an amendment to this tutorial, there is an even easier command that you can use to reinitialize your party or just delete everything in your party, and it's dollar sign trainer dot party equals just brackets. This makes your party an empty array and you can just delete everything in your party this way, in one fell swoop. I don't know why it was being stupid the other way before, but, um, check this out. We got our whole party here of six Pokemon. And instead, dollar sign trainer dot party is just empty. Now we have no party. We have no Pokemon. They're all gone now. And it's not dumb like it was previously. So anyway, I hope this helps. I don't want to be stumped in my own tutorial. So this is how you can delete all of the Pokemon in the party in one fell swoop. If you want to be very, very devious. Hopefully this episode helped you out and jogged some ideas in how you can make some devious events. And I appreciate you for watching. Um, please be sure to follow me on Twitch, follow me on Instagram, and f join the Thundaga Discord. And message me on Discord if you have any questions or just want to talk. And yeah, hopefully this episode helped you out. I'm sorry if I was kind of scatterbrained during it. It was me just like messing around with some stuff. So, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not, the, I'm not perfect, but uh, I, hopefully this was enough info for you to learn some interesting things. Anyway... I've been droning on and on for so much. I gotta say thank you again for watching. I appreciate you, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one.